Welcome guys to the first lesson. Uh, what we're going to talk about is how to talk about art. Uh, art is very difficult to talk about directly. I'm going to talk a lot of art, describing it with a lot of metaphors uh, about music, about film. It's similar to many aspects of life. So we kind of use a lot of metaphors. So here's a really cool video uh, explaining metaphors and a bit how we're going to be using them in art. When we talk, sometimes we say things directly. I'm going to the store. I'll be back in five minutes. Other times, though, we talk in a way that conjures up a small scene. It's raining cats and dogs out, we say, or I was waiting for the other shoe to drop. Metaphors are a way to talk about one thing by describing something else that may seem roundabout, but it's not. Seeing and hearing and tasting are how we know anything first. The philosopher William James described the world of newborn infants as a buzzing and blooming confusion. Abstract ideas are pale things compared to those first bees and blossoms. Metaphors think with the imagination and the senses. The hot chili peppers in them explode in the mouth and the mind. They're also precise. We don't really stop to think about a raindrop the size of an actual cat or dog, but as soon as I do, I realize that I'm quite certain the dog has to be a small one, a cocker spaniel or a dachshund, and not a golden lab or Newfoundland. I think a beagle might be about right. A metaphor isn't true or untrue in any ordinary sense. Metaphors are art, not science, but they can still feel right or wrong. A metaphor that isn't good leaves you confused. You know what it means to feel like a square wheel, but not what it's like to be tired as a whale. There's a paradox to metaphors. They almost always say things that aren't true. If you say, there's an elephant in the room, there isn't an actual one looking for the peanut dish on the table. Metaphors get under your skin by ghosting right past the logical mind. Plus, we're used to thinking in images. Every night we dream impossible things, and when we wake up, that way of thinking still in us. We take off our dream shoes and button ourselves into our lives. Some metaphors include the words like or as, sweet as honey, strong as a tree. Those are called similes. A simile is a metaphor that admits it's making a comparison. Similes tend to make you think. Metaphors let you feel things directly. So we're going to be using lots of metaphors to talk about things indirectly. It's very difficult sometimes to describe art directly, so we're going to use metaphors. The first metaphor that I'm going to use for this class is that with you guys right now, what we're going to do is build the foundation. Okay, it's like building a skyscraper or a house. When you build a house or a skyscraper, most of the time you spend building the foundation, the bottom of the house. Um, but before you even do that, you have to dig a big hole. You put in the concrete and the structure, and you make sure everything's solid down there. Um, and we're going to dig out. So the metaphor of that is you guys have a lot of ideas in your head that we need to get out of there. For example, oh, I can't draw. Oh, I'm not artistic. Oh, you know, I don't have that talent. That doesn't matter. You follow these, these instructions. You follow the class that I teach you and you can learn how to draw. Some people will be better than others. Um, but mostly it has to do more with how much time you put into it. If you really put your time into it. You're, you can be good. So first of all, we have to kind of clear the mind of all your past thoughts of what you can and can't do. Get rid of that, make a hole, and now we're going to fill it with structure. So this beginning structure is the foundation. When you build a house, you have to have a strong foundation. You have a strong foundation, you can build on top of it. You can build the first floor, the second floor, the third, and build up, and build on top of that. If you don't have the foundation, a lot of people skip the foundation, which for us is, you're going to learn today. Uh, if you skip that, then what you have is superficial. You learn how to paint, maybe some nice tricks, maybe you learn some cool little stuff, but eventually that's going to fall over because your foundation isn't good. So in drawing, the foundation is basically making good shapes. So good shapes have readability. What does readability mean? It means they're easy to read. 
So you are used to a written language. Now you guys are going to learn, I'm going to show you a visual language, okay? It's a language just like any other. It is different though. So let's talk about shapes. We want to make them simple. So here's some examples, okay? The first example we have here is by a painter called J.C. Leindecker. His shapes are more obvious than the normal. Huh? Um, he is a very good example. Let me show you an example here. So take a look at the video. Here's a shape underneath the jaw. It is all relatively the same color and it defines the face. Okay, let's look at another. Now we have another shape here, which makes his cheeks. And let's take a look at another. This one underneath the hat is the hair. Now we have the under part of the, the hat. And the, all of these shapes are characterized by one color, basically. One color, one shade, one tone. And now we have a part of the chin, a highlight. And then you have the eyebrow, also another shape. All of these shapes come together to create the overall image of the face. So separately, you can see here are all the shapes of that painting, all the shapes separated and made random. Okay. Now all of these shapes you can see are quite simple. They are abstract and each of the shapes is somewhat interesting in itself. It's interesting. It's like, what is that? Okay. We break apart images into shapes. Here's another example. This one is by Walter Everett. You can also start to see already that this painting is actually broken up into many different shapes. The first one I'm going to talk about is the highlights, the very bright areas. This one is on the, on the girl leaning back. You have the very bright areas there. So those marks. Then you have the highlights in the background, which makes the landscape. Some more shapes. Let's zoom in and now we can see, okay, there's the shape of the neck and the face. It's all the same shape, they're the same color. And then his jacket, the darker areas of his jacket. So that's the basis, looking for shapes. Now you guys have an idea what we're looking for. Learning how to see is the most important thing with art. If you can learn how to see, the hand will follow. So that's why we spend a lot of time with the theory. So that's it for the first lesson. That's the theory, the idea behind it. Now uh, we're gonna move on and start doing some practice.